Hey everyone, Ari Mapo here, and today we're going to learn a little bit about MicroPython, the programming language written in Python, specifically targeted for embedded devices. We're also going to learn how to take that code and port it directly onto the Raspberry Pi Pico, a microcontroller supporting MicroPython. So come join me and let's learn. Before we get started, I want to give a very brief overview on the difference between Python, um, MicroPython in our case, but for this example, Python, an interpreted language versus a compiled language such as C, C++, Java. In this case, since we're targeting embedded systems, embedded microcontrollers, uh, we're going to talk about C. If you look on my screen over here, I have two examples. One is example.c and one is example.py. I'm going to demonstrate the difference between the flow of a compiled language versus an interpreted language. A compiled language, in this case, you have to run a compiler that builds an executable file that you can then run. With an interpreted language, you have an interpreter that just runs your code as it goes. So in this case, I have a C file. Very simple, I'm just printing hello world. So first, before running it, I can't just run this, I have to compile it first. Gee, I'm using my GCC compiler. You may have a different compiler that you're using, maybe bundled with your embedded device. But in this case, super simple, GCC example.c. It generates an output file called a.out. I now run that file and it prints out hello world. If I wanna do the same thing in Python, there's no compiling necessary. I just run Python, example.py, hello world. Um, this is the difference between a compiled language and an interpreted language. And in this case, you can see this is a lot faster for my development. Uh, with compiled languages, though, they do run faster, uh, especially as the program gets larger and larger and larger. More complex things such as real-time operating systems, you probably want to run in a more compiled environment. But in this particular case, I want to prototype the, the purpose of this demonstration, this example, this video is really to talk about rapid prototyping, uh, getting started with MicroPython, especially on embedded controllers like the Raspberry Pi Pico. One other thing I want to run through quickly, if you don't even want to run or create a new file, you can just run the command directly in the interpreted shell. So I type in Python, it opens up a Python shell. So now I can just say print hello world. And now you see it prints directly there. So I didn't even have to create a file. I can just test a command. So let's say I learned something, a new concept like list comprehension. So I want to create an array or a list of values. And I said, you know, I want to find a quicker way to do this. So I learned about something called list comprehension. So let's see, x or x in range of one to six with stepping one. And now I have my list instead of specifically spelling out each item in the array. So I just learned about list comprehension. I'm able to test that inside the shell. And now I could go write this in my code. For example, if I want this, say this, and then do a whole bunch of fancy stuff. So this is an example. This is the example doing talking about compiled language versus interpreted language, and then going through the shell and understanding how to run those interpreted commands instead of creating a file first and then running the example. So before we get started with MicroPython itself, I want to show you how to get started with your actual Raspberry Pi Pico device. So first thing we need to do is we need to pull out the Raspberry Pi Pico. This device is super easy to get started with MicroPython uh, versus an Arduino. This guy is really kind of designed from the ground up to make it really, really easy to get started with MicroPython. Thanks to the Ada, uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation and Adafruit.com, you can go pick up one of these for four bucks. It's also got dual core, which means that we can run multi-threaded applications on it, which is really, really nice for such a cheap microcontroller. <clears throat> so I'm going to micropython.org. I'm going to download the bootloader first. So we go filter down by vendor, which is Raspberry Pi. This chip is called the RP20, this guy right here. Or you can just grab this right here, Raspberry Pi Pico. And I'm gonna go download the latest 
uh, bootloader file, a .uft, uf2 extension. Uh, I have it already. I'm going to bring it over. So first thing I do is I plug in for the first time my device, and you will see that it shows up as a basically a thumb drive almost. And what I'm going to do is just drag and drop that file, the uf2 file. It's going to load, and you're going to see it's actually going to restart. It's no longer a thumb drive. It's gone. So what we want to do now, I open up my favorite serial communication device. In this case, I'm using TerraTerm. You can use PuTTY, uh, whatever you're familiar with. And I hit Enter, and I now have an interpreted shell. So let's go back for a second to regular Python. So if in Python I say import sys, sys.implementation. Okay, so it's telling me that I'm running on an x86, 64 Linux device. If I do this in Windows directly, import sys, sys.implementation. Okay, so this is running C Python um, and Windows. Okay. So you saw I've demonstrated that in both Linux on an AMD64 machine and the same thing with Windows. Now, if I go to my interpreted shell, so I'm talking over serial communication to my embedded device, to the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico. I go import sys, sys.implementation. And as you can see here, the actual name is MicroPython. And the machine is Raspberry Pi Figure and right here. So I have an interpreter that I can run any command. So before, as we did with the examples, print hello world, print it. And again, if I want to do list comprehension, x or x in range, one, six, one. And there you go. So we now have our Raspberry Pi Pico set up ready to go, and we're going to show you how to install the IDE and run code directly onto that device. So now that we've demonstrated how to set up the Raspberry Pi Pico, open up an interpreted shell over TerraTerm or PuTTY, now we want to look at how to develop code and load it onto the device itself. The official IDE that Adafruit and the Raspberry Pi Foundation, especially for the Raspberry Pi Pico, that is supported is called Thony. So if we go to their website, thony.org, you can go ahead and download it directly there. You can download an installer. You can download a portable version. I downloaded the portable version just to make it easy, unzipped it, and now I can run it directly. So if I go here, thony.exe, I'm going to open that up and also make sure that your uh, communication software such as PuTTY or TerraTerm is closed. You want to make sure that POM, COM port is accessible to this software because we've now, as you can see, opened up an interpreter into the IDE itself. So in the bottom right corner, if for some reason that doesn't come up automatically, which it shouldn't the first time, it should set up by local Python. You can just go and select the MicroPython. These two are the same COM port, so it doesn't matter which one you choose. Now I'm going to demonstrate that we are actually on the device itself like we did sys.implementation, and you can see we're on Python, Raspberry Pi Pico device. So this is how you set up Thony. If you see over here on the left-hand side, I've selected files. If that doesn't show up automatically, go ahead and select that under View Files, and you'll see I've already saved some files onto the device, but I'm going to just show you as an example how to save a file. So I'm gonna go to New File, New right here. I'm going to save it and it's going to say, hey, where do you want to save this file? I'd like to save it on the RP2040 device. Go ahead and save it. Link sample. Hi. And this is a very, very simple example. Uh, actually, a lot of these examples come from there is a kind of handbook that the Raspberry Pi Foundation put together for this device, for the Raspberry Pi Pico, actually, um, and MicroPython. It's really great, really easy to use. They have a whole ebook that you can use as well. Uh, they show how to install Thony. A lot of things that we go over here will be there, including some examples. And uh, 
definitely refer to this guide, raspberrypi.org, getting started with the Pico. So I've downloaded my interpreter. I now have everything going on. I'm going to run this example. So you can run the current script directly here. If you see right here, so before I run it, I'm importing the pin and the timer library. I'm getting access, pin 25 is the LED that's on the Pico board itself. I'm gonna show that to you. And the what I'm doing is I'm setting up a timer to run at 2.5 Hertz. It's going to blink the LED, toggle it on, off, on, off, on, off. So let's go and run this code here. And if you see, it's going to start blinking right here in the corner. You see, it goes on, off, on, off, on, off. If I turn off the debugging, stop the code, I stopped it while it was on. Let's try and see if we can stop it while it's off. There you go. It's off. So uh, that's a very, very simple example. Now, if I want to do something a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more complicated, I can use a multi-threaded example. And again, this is very similar to what's in the PDF that they provide their ebook. Uh, I modified it, tweaked it a little bit, but the, the concept is the same. We create a task that basically just prints, you know, this is a spawn thread. And then I have my main thread. My main thread just prints, hello, you know, this is main thread, and it sleeps for one second. So what I do is I start the spawn thread and I say, just run this thread um, every 0 0.5. Well, the delay is 0 0.5 seconds. So I spawn this thread. This is going to run forever. And every half a second, it's going to print this line. This is a spawned thread. Uh, in my main thread, it's going to say this is the main thread and it runs once every second. Now, what is the purpose of this? Why would you want to do something like this? In real time operating systems, what you have is something called like a scheduler where you can schedule out and time slice, uh, give each thread uh, time to do something. So for example, if you want to talk to a device over spy, an ADC, you want to grab that and that takes, I don't know, 30 microseconds. And then you want to do something else, gather some information from another ADC, that's another 30 microseconds. And you can time slice these and schedule everything out. Now, with MicroPython, I have, and the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico, I have multiple cores, actually two cores, where I can just like kick off this thread and just like forget about it. I don't need to schedule, I don't need to do anything. That's really easy for. Um, and really simple to prototype very quickly. I just toss the thread. I say, go grab information from this ADC constantly, pull it. I don't need to worry about scheduling. I don't need to worry about people interrupting. And then I can just kick that off and run. Not the most efficient use of my core, but super simple, no libraries, no compiling, nothing. I can just run this on the fly. So let's go ahead and run this. So for example, see, this is a spawn thread. It runs that twice and main. So think of it that I'm collecting data twice from a downstream ADC or multiple ADCs. And while the main thread is delivering that information or responding to other commands or talking to something, maybe it's uh, responding to telemetry or gathering telemetry from other devices. So this makes it really easy to prototype. Again, in RTOS, real-time operating system is going to be much more sophisticated. You may want to consider that, but this gives you a really easy, quick way to prototype multi-threaded applications on multiple cores. So today we looked at MicroPython, the language that's written specifically for embedded targets. We learned a little bit about the language itself, ran through some examples. We also set up Blinky LED examples and multi-threaded applications on the Raspberry Pi Pico itself. We got familiar with the environment and now we should be able to run most code that you can find examples online or writing yourself. If you enjoyed this video, please check out the rest of the videos in this channel. Definitely hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.